This is Malcolm Cecil. There's a lot of people here that want to talk to him, so I'm going to let him go in a second. But I'm Gina Rovera with Electronic Musician Magazine. What have you been up to? Well, I've been relocating Tonto. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I turned 70, which was now eight years ago, I realized that if I didn't find a home for Tonto, it would probably end up as being dismantled and being sold modules on eBay by my son, who doesn't understand what it's all about and uh, tends to uh, devalue anything I do anyway. <laughs> you know how kids are. Anyhow, um, I wanted to make sure that it had a home. And I turned down the Smithsonian, I turned down Yale, I turned down Cornell, I turned down Bard, all because they didn't satisfy the five requirements. The first one being that there would be a tech who really understood what was going on and would maintain Tonto and restore it to its original condition. Because I have been doing it for like 40, 40 odd years and I was at the end of my resource. Uh, being 70 as well, my eyes are not the same, I can't keep doing the solder, I've got no depth of vision and so on and so forth. So, uh, John Limesider was the, was the fellow up in, in Calgary who is the technician. The second requirement is that it should be on display, not behind the case. It should be available to the public for hands-on, of course under supervision, for people to experiment with. That's what it was designed for. Number three, it should be available for artists and residents who want to record it. So it has to have full recording facility. Number four, it should be available for live performance. So there has to be a stage available. And it can be moved. Tonto's portable in the sense that it can be moved, but it, 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 it's a lot more portable than people think. It doesn't look but portable at all. It is, and it's got a handle on top. Oh, okay. <laughs> and number five, which is most important to me now because I've gone into education now. I teach up at Columbia Green Community College. I don't teach four-year college. I prefer to teach people who want to improve themselves. And the two-year college is just perfect for me. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to pass on the best knowledge. And so the fourth thing was to be able to be, me to be able to run seminars on it as long as I'm able to accomplish my So those five conditions were uh, the only, it took me seven years to find the right right uh, placement for it. And it turned out to be the National Music Center in Calgary. I would love to have placed it in America. Nobody in America was interested and could fulfill those five conditions. Uh, Smithsonian wanted to put it in mothballs, Yale didn't have the space, and were telling me, oh, well, you know, eventually we'll have space. Cornell, same story. Bard University, they wanted to squeeze it into a classroom. And I'm going, no, this is not right. Yeah. And they didn't, none of them had a tech that could work on it. So it ended up being uh, the National Music, National, uh, Music Center in Calgary, which is a combination of Canadian government and private uh, enterprise who run it and um, I let it go to them for a fraction of its value because it was the right place. So I'm, I'm very happy about it but I insisted that they purchase it because I didn't want it, my son to come and take it and strip it and, and, it out, and yeah. do all that. You know, yeah. but I, ha I have an issue with my son as you can gather. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll, you'll oversee the room, it's the installation of it in the room and the, the recording system around Yes, it. absolutely. Uh, I'm, what, what happened is that John Limesider is working all of 2014. He was working on the Rolling Stones remote truck, which they had purchased, and somebody had, had cut all the wires and removed the original equipment. They located all the equipment, and John's been rewiring it. Hell of a job. He had to do that because they're going to wrap it in 20 mil plastic and hoist it up in about three floors, I don't know how many floors, to where they're building the new building, which is still a shell, and hasn't got the outside walls on. They're going to put it in there, then they're going to build the outside walls because there's no way to get it up there afterwards. Wow. So he had to have that finished this year because of the schedule of the building. This coming year, I shouldn't say last year, 2014. Now it's 2015, it's Tonto year. And I'm going to be going up there quite frequently and working with him, but he's a very capable tech and uh, I've given him all of my documentation. It took me a long time to gather it all together and it's now up there and uh, I should be going up and helping him and, and supervising the, the installation. It's having its own room. It's going to be on display. But right now it's in what they call the gallery. But it is on display and people can use it. And it'll, but it'll have a concert space attached as well. It could move to the concert space or to the recording studio yeah, as, they, as they choose. It, it takes four people to move it, but okay. it can be moved in four heavies. 
and I'm trying to get cases, I'm trying to raise the funds for cases for it because they've told me that if I can have it put in proper cases, then they would let me take it out and, and, and move it and, and, and do things like this. Maybe next NAM, if we have the cases, will be good. So, you know, I need to do a fundraiser for cases for Tonto because um, the National Music Centre, you know, I, I need to build the right cases. We had cases when we first had it. And they were fine as long as it was no modules in it. As soon as we put the modules in it, it took six people to get it in and out of the case. And it was just impractical. Yeah. So I have, I know the exact design to, to do. To make um, John, John Sturrock is the one who designed oh. Tonto itself. He's, he designed the Electric Lady Studios. He has a very, very good, uh, you know, he's been in the building studios for years and years and years. So he's very good. He's a Buckminster Fuller student. So oh, that's wow. hence, hence the shape of Tonto. Yeah. In fact, Tonto is made to measure. He measured our arms and so on, so, so that we could have so one step around. It's yeah. ergonomical because we had two mode threes to begin with, and we had the keyboards on a, a T trolley, and you know we were pulling it up and down, and it, it, it just didn't work. So John said, "You need to have this design on the inside of the sphere." So he did the design, and the reason we had to rehouse it was the second. Mode 3 that we bought was from Electric Circus in uh, Chicago where there had been a fire and the cases were burned on the outside but the modules were okay so we had to rehouse it so I'm a full-on tech I was trained in radar for Her Majesty's uh, Royal Air Force and um, I aside from my musical and, and, and my, my administrative capabilities as you know, producer, engineer, record executive which is all the things I've done, but I was I was the obvious choice to, to you know by the Dow, not not by any individual, but you know the Dow put me in that position, and I decided um, that I was going to put Tonto together. Bob and I used to theorise about it, right on napkins, uh, sitting over uh, you know the, El Castillo Chino, which was a Chinese Me Mexican restaurant, bags and bags of uh, MSG. You know we didn't know at the time. And uh, we sat there, and most of Tonto was designed on the back of napkins. And uh, then we, uh, the art company allowed us to buy modules. We were the first people to be able to sell modules to. Um, fortunately, Bob Moe didn't like that because he was having a fight with art. I was trying to make an instrument that would be Tonto's, the original new timbre orchestra. Yeah, right. The original, because it was the first. New timbre, because timbre is French for tone colours. Although tone colours is all it does, it also does sequences, events, I call them, sound events. Uh, and so we have, and then orchestra, because more than one synthesizer and intended to be played in unison, and they're all supposed to talk to each other. I should be able to play an art keyboard in a mobile play. And Bob Moog was not up for that, so he sort of uh, shut us out mm. on that level, and we had to pay full price for everything. Which we've always done, so we own it. Uh, and uh, I bought Bob out, uh, Bob Margolef, not Bob Margolef. I bought Bob Margolef out um, in 1974 when we parted ways with Stevie and he wanted to go on to do production. And I said, No, I want to do Tonto. Uh, this is my dream, this is something that I've been dreaming of since I was 15, 16 years old. And it started off as the idea of an electronic music typewriter mm -hmm. and uh, using post office relays, you know, stepping switches and all this stuff. And of course that never actually got built. It's just a design in my head. And then when I came found all these control synthesizers in the States, fantastic. Huge step forward. So uh, that's that's pretty much it. What have you been using uh, this the newer system for? Well what have you set up here today? This is I just walked in this morning and just sort of patched started patching and um, it just came together. It's totally improvised. The beautiful thing about this instrument is I'm a jazz music musician. Okay. You know, so to me, spontaneity is it. The, the idea of composing and, and performing at the same time, improvisation and swing. Those are the two things that define jazz, and to me, anyway. And so I just came in and I just started patching, getting the sounds up, and following my notes. And what came out was what came out. I won't play that again. I don't know how to. I can't repeat. I couldn't, I couldn't repeat. I play jazz every Friday and Saturday. I keep my hands in as an upright bass player, and I play the same songs with the same musicians. But we never play it the same twice. It's never. I can't. I can't play the solos I do because they're spontaneous. 
And that's what this was, spontaneous. And this instrument is totally suited to that. Digital instruments, they're too benign. It's like, first of all, all the sounds are the same. With our keyboards, with our with Tonto, every note is a different instrument. So you can, you've got the opportunities to make tone, tone colors and mixtures and things which are not possible in any other way. And the same here, you know, whatever occurs to me, whatever the sound suggests, that's where I go. And it, it's fun and it, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's interesting for me and hopefully for the people who are listening. Because I'm enjoying myself. And I have a saying that if you don't enjoy yourself, how can you expect other people to enjoy it? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Malcolm, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Gino, you're very welcome. Anytime. Good, and congratulations on uh, finding a home for your system. I'm it's so pleased. Yeah. I'm so pleased. And I think it's my legacy. So That's great. I want to make sure that it survives.